Hello, Ellie here from Thankful Flow Yoga. Thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube for this practice, or whether you're seeing this on the membership. Um, if you're on YouTube, please do make sure to subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the flows and do comment and feedback to me on how you're getting on. So we're here today for part two of our Mindful Mornings series. Um, so we're going to be looking today at the second yama, the external behaviours that we look at in yoga, which is satya, which is our truth. Now, um, coming into a comfortable seated position when you're ready, taking any blocks or props that you need. This is an all levels practice, um, so whether you're kind of new to the practice or um, whether you're, you've been doing yoga for a while, this will be suitable for all the different levels. So. We will start with finding your comfortable seat that could either be a cross leg position or it could be taking your legs out in front, whatever is comfortable for you to come into that neutral spine. And then we're going to bring the hands to the heart center. I'm just being careful of my microphone, but bringing the hands to this chest heart center area, placing one hand over the other. And when you're ready, I want you to start to close down the eyes or take a steady gaze out in front. So this second yama, this second yama satya, connecting to our truth. So this is all about really connecting to our authentic self. And in order to externally express your truth and be in your truth in your life, in your practice, what comes before that is really connecting to the truth within. So your internal truth that's within you and lies within all of us. So a lot of this is about connecting to your authentic self, stripping back the outer layers, stepping away from the ego. And connecting to what lies beneath all of that. And the more that we do that, the more that this will then extend out to the others around us. Allowing them to be in their truth too. And we can start by doing this today in this practice by listening to our body, listening to our breath, being aware, noticing any emotions that are present, any thoughts traveling through the thinking mind, and starting with accepting what we find there's no right or wrong. So we'll begin this practice today with some coherent breathing. So this is an equal breathing technique. This allows us to connect to our nervous system. This allows us to slow down the brain waves, slow down the heart rate. So I'm gonna count for six on our inhale and our exhale, breathing in and out through the nose. But if at any time this does not feel right for you, then just come back to your natural breath. Do not force anything. So inhaling through the nose for one, two, three, four, five, six, exhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six, inhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six, exhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six, inhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six, exhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six, inhaling for one, two, three, 
four, five, six. Exhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhaling for one, two, three, four, five, six. Now just coming back to your natural breathing. And with this breath technique, if you ever want to take this outside of your practice, so if you're doing it at another time, the longer that you stay with this equal breath in and out, the greater effect that it will have. So we just did roughly five breaths of this equal breathing. But if you can continue this for longer, you can have a bigger effect on the nervous system, providing a sense of calm. Now starting to open the eyes if you had them closed. And we're just gonna inhale and I want you to lift your shoulders up towards your ears so you'll feel this whole area of the body tensing. Keep breathing, we're not holding the breath here. And then on an exhale, I want you to release and relax everything. And if it feels good to on the exhale, you can make the exhale um, a releasing breath out through the mouth. Take what feels right to you. So we're gonna do that twice more. So inhale, start to squeeze the shoulders up to the ears. We're tensing. Keep breathing on the exhale. <sighs> Release. And last one, lifting those shoulders up. And release, let it all go. <sighs> let the shoulder blades run down your back. Bring your hands back to your heart. And we're just gonna take some gentle tapping here. So tapping around this heart chakra area. This is Anahata. And our heart chakra is all about our connection to loving ourselves and loving others and the balance between the two. And this again, we can really connect into our Yama Satya today, our truth, because often our truth comes back to how do we feel at the heart. So coming away from the thinking mind, coming away from ego, coming away from all those other layers. And it's not to label those layers as negative or good or bad. It's just to observe that there are these layers here. Seeing if we can peel things back sometimes. Coming back to the heart space. So tapping around in this chest area, this can be a nice way energetically to get the energy moving in this area. And notice how it feels. Notice if this area feels tight or restricted, hard or soft. Maybe it feels free. Well done, and release. So moving into our tabletop position now. Shoulders above the wrist, hips above the knees. Coming into some cat and cow. So on the inhale, the gaze comes out in front and we're shining the heart forwards. On your exhale, drop the head round the spine, draw the belly button in, lift up and out through the shoulders. Leading with your breath on your inhale, sending the gaze forwards, opening across the chest. On your exhale, you drop the head, lift up and out through the shoulders, draw the belly button in towards the spine. And now I want you to start seeing if you can get a little bit creative with your cat and cow today. So again, kind of finding a bit of intuitive movement, embodied movement. So notice how the body feels as you take this movement. So maybe you start to roll the body around a little bit in your cat and cow. So maybe you're starting to move the hips a little bit. You could be shifting the hips from side to side, feeling that stretch into the side body. So really don't worry about how this looks. 
wor focus on <laughs> not worry. I don't want you to worry about anything. That's why we're here. <clears throat> don't worry about how the movement looks. Focus on how it feels within you. <coughs> Maybe you're starting to shift back into child's pose, floating forwards. Maybe you find a little upward dog here. Maybe you find a cobra. Again, these are all just options. Maybe you're just pausing for longer in your cat and cow. Okay. So sometimes when we get these options in yoga class, when the teacher's giving us options or kind of saying, oh, be intuitive with your movements, sometimes that can actually be quite a hard space to be in. Sometimes that can feel like quite a challenging thing to do at first. We're not always used to being given less structure, less, <laughs> less structure, more options. We're not always used to having that in that in this modern day world. So when we're given it, sometimes we kind of go, Oh, I don't know what to do. So just go with what feels right. If you're staying with normal cat and cow, that's okay, too. We're just exploring and observing ourself what your truth is today. Okay, coming back to neutral. Bring the hips above the knees. From here, we're gonna walk the hands out in front, find our extended puppy pose, our melting heart pose. So melt the heart and the forehead down towards the mat. Breathing here, you can come onto the forearms if you need to here, if this is feeling a little strong. Remember, especially if you're doing this first thing in the morning, it takes a little while for our body to open up throughout the day. So be mindful of that. Reconnect with your breath, your prana. Inhale, draw the belly in to support your spine. Walk your hands back into center. And then on your exhale, shift the hips back towards the heels, find your child's pose, melt your head and your chest down to the mat, closing the eyes or taking a steady gaze. Breathing in and out through the nose. And just allowing the body to soften. Letting go, surrendering. Notice where you can feel your breath traveling to within your body. Notice what kind of thoughts you're having today, what kind of thoughts are passing through the mind. No need to label anything or change anything. Observing whatever is there. Inhale, start to open the eyes back up, lift your hips away from the heels. Just remember you can come back to a child's pose at any time throughout your practice. Tuck the toes under, walk your feet in towards the hands and find a forward fold. So bend your legs as much as you need to. I'm gonna hang down here in a forward fold. An option to bring your hands underneath the feet if that doesn't feel right for you, then you don't have to take it. Just let the hands hang heavy. Hands don't even need to be touching the mat here, okay? So bending your legs as much as you need to and just allow the head to drop down heavy. Keep releasing through the head and the neck. And if you've got the hands underneath, just feeling that way that the soles of the feet are massaging the inside of the hands and vice versa. Noticing how that feels. Taking any gentle movement that feels good here. Release the hands if you had them under the feet. Bring the hands to the hips. 
Inhale, draw the belly button in towards the spine. Lift the chest, come up to Tadasana, mountain pose. So feet roughly hip width apart, hands by the side of the body and we'll come into our Surya Namaskar A, our Sun Salutation A. So we inhale, reach your fingertips up to the sky, lift your ribs away from your hips. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold, bend your legs as much as you need to. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Hands are either going to come to the ground, the thighs, the thighs or the shins. <laughs> Just remember, you can keep some bend in the legs and the main thing is lengthening through your spine here. Exhale, hands come down to the mat, step the feet back to either a plank or you're going to drop your knees straight down to modify. Shoulders above the wrist, fingers nice and spread. Notice your connection between the hands and the ground beneath you. Notice your inner line of energy through the body, your core. Inner thighs drawing together. Tummy, abdomen activated. Keep breathing. Exhale, drop the knees down. We'll flow through our chaturanga so you can take it into a downward facing dog if that's in your practice. Or you're going to come down to lying on the belly, hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale, roll the shoulders back. Peel the chest away, cobra. Exhale, melt the chest back down. And then on the exhale, everybody meeting back in a downward facing dog. Press the mat away with your hands, lift the hips to the sky. And you can keep some bend in the legs if you need to. We really want to be lengthening through the spine. Drishti is between the knees. So try and relax your head as much as possible. Take a moment to check in. Notice how you're feeling today. Inhale, send the gaze between the hands, step or jump the feet in, lift the chest, lengthen the spine, find your halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, reach the fingertips back up to the sky, grow the spine tool, Sirasana. Exhale, hands come through to heart center, and Jali Mudra. From here, ground through your right foot, step the left foot back, we find our warrior two. So this right knee is above the ankle. The side of my left foot is in line with the side of the mat. So finding your root of the pose first, find your positioning with the feet, the legs, and then bring the arms parallel, sending your gaze over the right fingertips. Relax your shoulders. Flip the right palm up so that it's facing the ceiling. Inhale, lift up and out from the waist. Come into your peaceful warrior or reverse warrior. So imagine you're shooting energy through these right fingertips up to the sky. Left hand is really lightly resting on the left leg but not putting pressure into that area. Breathing here. and release come back to your warrior two lengthen through your right leg so both legs are lengthened now and you can always bring the feet in closer together to stabilize more so hands reaching out inhale reach forwards with your right fingertips so really coming forwards as far as you can and then tipping from the waist we're finding our trigonasana our triangle pose so for Trigonasana, this right hand could be coming to the right thigh and this left hand could come back to the hip. You could be working here or the, the hands coming to the inside of the shin or maybe it comes down to the mat. So really important that we keep the space across the chest. This left shoulder is opening, okay? So if you're reaching these left fingertips up to the sky, imagine that you're reaching energy so if you're finding that you're trying to come down lower but you're rounding the spine, then come higher up, bring the hands in, working there. Breathing into that space. And 
there's lots going on in this pose. So staying with your breath. Inhale, start to come back up. Bending back through that right leg, finding a warrior two. And then you're gonna step that left foot in and you're gonna take your block if you're working with a block and we're work, gonna come into our Ardha Chandrasana, our half moon pose. So your right hand is either gonna come to the block or the mat and then we're lifting this left leg away so this left hip's open and the left fingertips coming up to the sky. Breathing here. Now if this is too much for you, if you've got a wall, you could do it against the wall and use that to support you, see as I am doing here, or you can bend that right leg and you can take a half moon position, but lower down on the mat so you could be working here as a supported option to take what you need in this practice. To add in a little more, send your gaze up to the ceiling, add another dimension to that balance. Well done, and release, come up to standing. So we're gonna come back to Tadasana Mountain Pose and take a few grounding breaths before we come onto the other side. Now working with a Qi Gong movement here, this is a really nice grounding breath technique and Qi Gong technique. So we bring the hands out to the side, palms of the hands facing the ceiling. I'll demonstrate first and then we'll all do it together. So on your inhale, you're grounding the feet into the earth, bending the legs and then drawing the energy up with your hands. On the exhale, you bend through the elbows, a bit like a coffee plunger, palms of the hands facing down. You breathe out and you ground that energy down. So taking nice, slow, soft breaths, but go at your own pace. So inhale, you bend the legs, reach the energy up. Exhale, bend through the elbows, palms facing down, ground the energy down. So we're gonna take three more of these breaths and close the eyes if you can, or just take a steady gaze out in front. So inhale, reach the energy up to the sky. Exhale, bend through the arms, slowly draw the energy back down to the earth with your exhale. Two more, inhale, draw that energy up. Exhale, ground that energy down. Last one, inhale, when you're ready, go at your own pace. Drawing the energy up, exhale, bringing that energy back down to the earth. Let the arms come to the side of the body and notice whatever you notice. Maybe you can feel some energy tingling sensations in the hands or the fingers or elsewhere within the body. Opening the eyes back up now if you have them closed. Come back to the top of your mat. This time we step the right leg back, find our warrior two. So left leg's at the front. Find that warrior two position, arms are parallel, relax the shoulders, gaze comes over the left fingertips. Flip your left palm up so that it's facing the ceiling. Inhale, lift up and out from the waist, find your peaceful warrior. So legs are staying exactly the same, all of this movement's coming from the waist. Really deep stretch into the left side body. See if you can send your gaze up to the ceiling. Keep breathing here. Notice your breath, notice how the breath feels. Well done, float it back to your warrior two. Lengthen through the left leg. You can bring your stance in slightly if you need to. Inhale, reach forwards with the left fingertips. 
forwards, 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 tipping at the waist, open out to your Trigonasana, send the gaze up to the sky, breathing here, remember take the Trigonasana higher up if you need to, this left hand could be coming to a block, okay, so use your support, take the support in your practice that you need today. Coming back to Satya, what's your truth today? Your truth might be that you need your block there to support you. <laughs> that might be your truth today, that might not. Well done. Start to come back up, finding your warrior two. Then you can bring your hands in and you're gonna step that back leg in taking your block with the left hand or just bringing that left hand straight down to the mat. So remembering the options that I gave before for our Ardha Chandrasana half moon. So taking what feels right to you. Gaze comes up to the sky. So we're opening this right hip. Breathing into any wobbles and shakes. If you're wobbling coming in and out of the poses a lot, just know that that is just as much, I say this all the time, but it's, because I really believe it to be true. It's my truth. <laughs> but any wobbles and shakes coming in and out of poses is just as much part of this practice as holding a pose on any given day. <laughs> We're building our joint stability and our strength by, you know, through the wobbles, through the coming in and out. That is the journey. <laughs> it's a bit like life, really. <laughs> We have the ups and downs in life, we have the struggles, we have the, the wobbles, so to speak. But this builds our growth, our foundations, our strength, all of these different things. Well done. So we're going to come away from our half moon pose now. And we're going to float ourselves down to meet in a plank position. And we'll take a final vinyasa, so you're either going to drop your knees down and work into your cobra, or on the inhale, you can float through into an upward facing dog, taking whatever's in your practice. And then on your exhale, we meet back in a downward facing dog, lifting the hips to the sky, pressing the mat away with your hands. Reconnecting with your breath. And then from your downward facing dog, just drop your knees down to the mat. And we're going to come and bring the hips down to a seated position. Start to bring that right leg out in front. Bend your left knee in and then let the left knee come out to the side and the sole of the left foot's coming to the inside of that right thigh. So finding our Janu Shasana. You can take a block under the left thigh. You can also have a block under your hips here as well to see what feels right for you. And we'll start with a neutral spine position. Inhale here, lift the ribs away from the hips. As you exhale, lead with the chest folding forwards over this right leg. So the belly is coming over the thigh, leading with the chest. If you need to stay higher up, you absolutely can. Really keep that space across the chest, lead with the chest bone. And stretching into the back of that right leg, opening the left hip. Stretching the spine. So as you breathe on your inhales, maybe see if you can find a gentle lift through the chest and on the exhale, relaxing and releasing into the fold as much as you can. Coming back to bringing our awareness into the body, observing what you can feel.
Inhale, lifting the chest away, coming away from the fold. Bring that left knee back in, bring it out in front. Take a little shake out through the legs if you need to. And we'll come on to the other side. So bend in the right knee, let the right knee drop out to the side. You can take a block under the right thigh if you need to, or under the hips, take that support. So the sole of my right foot's coming to the inside of the right thigh, and my left leg's directly coming out in front. Start with a neutral spine, inhale, lift the crown of the head towards the ceiling. As you exhale, fold forwards, leading with the chest. Folding over the left leg. Finding your breath in the pose. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, letting go, surrendering and relaxing as much as you can. One more breath here. And on the inhale, lifting the chest away, coming back to neutral. Bend in that right leg, bring it out in front, take a little wiggle, a little shake out. And then just come back to your comfortable seated position where we started the practice. And we're gonna bring our hands back to our heart center, Anahata. Closing down the eyes or taking a steady gaze. Relaxing the neck and the shoulders. Relaxing the jaw. And gently press the hands into your heart space, the chest. Notice the connection between your hands and your body. Notice the chest move as you breathe. Finish the practice with the offering that whatever is going on for you today, right now, you are exactly where you're meant to be. Trust that you are exactly where you're meant to be right now. Open the eyes back up when you're ready, releasing the hands. As always, if you have longer to do Shavasana meditation, please, please definitely recommend that you do that. Um, if you're someone who usually does the power practices with me, I'm still putting those out twice a week. But this is a lovely kind of addition to that if, if that's what you want it to be. Um, so that you can really connect to a little bit more of the philosophy of yoga and a gentler practice as well and um, so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this please do subscribe to my channel check out the link below to other things that i offer but thank you so much for being here please do comment and um, feedback to me on how you're getting on and i can't wait to see you for part three take care